you doing, man? It's Joe D, and welcome to another Share a Beer. This is Share a Beer 415. Uh, thank you for tuning in on YouTube and wherever else you're able to watch. I'm not sure, but uh, um, thank you for tuning in. We got Mark here with us and Bum with us. Um, how are you guys doing? Excellent. So we are going to, uh, of course, get into what we're drinking. We're going to do that. Um, but I also want to get into some stuff that's happened uh, over the weekend, uh, the NBA. We got to cover the NBA. We got to talk a little bit about the NHL. We got to get current on some of this stuff. Uh, these have been really good series. Um, I haven't watched uh, the hockey because of my my work schedule is nuts, but um, – but I'm sure we can get a hockey schedule uh, update uh, from somebody. Um, but I definitely wanted to cover uh, the NBA because I, I, I got to watch that game two Sunday and wow. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll talk about all that. And then we have some more in Bev buyout news, which is to me, one of the most kind of interesting of all the buyouts, if you ask me. Um, so we'll jump right into it. Thanks, head coach, for jumping in on the chat. Uh, Bum, what are you drinking, my friend? Okay, well, it's kind of funny. I just in the pre show saw what Mark was drinking. It's a voodoo kind of a night. Now, uh, okay. I have from Voodoo Brewing. Oh, this cool. In uh, Meadville, PA, and also now in Pittsburgh, PA. This is their hazy afternoon, New England. Oh, unfiltered New England style IPA. Just another New England style IPA that's out there. That's yeah. that's taking over the world of craft beer right now. And there's and here's the New England man just jo joining us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He saw that I was drinking this. He wants to know my detailed yeah, the tasting alert. notes. Oh Jesus! Yeah. So good. So, so that's <laughs> um, voodoo <laughs> brewing. Is that He's got New England IPA? Brewing. Red this, light that goes on. Joe, this is the uh, Voodoo Brewing, same Voodoo Brewing as in the one I sent you, the Big Black Voodoo Daddy Stout. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I remember that. And what's interesting about this is they this is the first new packaged beer of theirs I've ever seen. They, they seem to have just over the years seemed to have same, stuck to the same seven or eight beers in bottles. And this is the first beer, new beer of theirs I've ever seen. In packages, and it's the first beer theirs I've ever seen in a can. Oh, cool! And this apparently just came out, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's opaque. Yeah, yeah. There's there's n nothing shining through there. And what was the name of the beer? One more time. Hazy afternoon. Hazy, hazy afternoon. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. And uh, I'll just say what everybody else says with this st style of beer. <laughs> Pulpy, juicy, citrusy, mm -hmm. all those things. Yeah, I'm, get, right. I'm, I'm getting all that. All of that, yeah. All that and a box of donuts. Yeah, all that and a box of donuts. Yeah. I, I got screwed out of donuts today. They had donuts in them. In, was in it was Friday like National Donut Day? Did I miss yeah. it? Yeah, we missed that. Yes, yes, we missed <laughs> one of the biggest holidays ever. Man, that's like right behind Christmas and Easter. Yeah, yeah. You done messed up, boy. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, hazy afternoon. Let me let me let me cover this one here on Untapped. Um, We've got, let me see, let me hit this button. Uh, only uh, 1,100, um, I mean, a, 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 a 111 ratings. Wow, I got all jacked up over that one. That's a new one then, huh? Yeah, yeah so I think yesterday when I bought it, there was only 100. So it uh -huh. is brand new. And it, yeah, yeah it looks like 53017. It was added. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. Hazy yeah. Afternoon is our New England style pale ale brewed. With lavish amounts of citra, mosaic, uh, Denali, Eldorado, and Azica hops. Huh. Uh, rich in citrus and tropical fruit notes, this beer was designed to be bright, hoppy, and sessionable. So sit back, relax, and spend the rest of this hazy afternoon with us. Mm -hmm. So we got 4.1 bottle caps, man. That's a hell of a rating. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, would, what rating would you give it there, Bum? Uh, when I check it into Untapped, probably two months from now after I take a picture and everything. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm going to give it a, probably like a 3.75, <laughs> just only because this is not my go to style. Okay. For, I mean, it's an, well, maybe I should rate it higher. It's an ex excellent example of the style. Um, a, yeah, I don't have any friends that have uh, had that beer. So, yeah, it's a new, new beer. 5.5% yeah. ABV, so it's definitely sessionable. We'll check out this guy's picture here. Um, oh, he's watching the hockey game. Look at that. Yeah. Um, nice glass. That's that's a lot like uh, uh, New Belgium's glass. Um, mm -hmm. So what's on, what's on the can? Is it just... Some guy it took, it took me a second to figure it out. It's a very bad drawing of a guy re le leaning back in a recliner, which if there's no way you're going to be able to tell by looking at that, that that's what it is. It looks like some, with the blue background, it looks like some octopus or something. Like something, yeah. un, doesn't it look like something underwater? Oh, you, you know what? Like you're looking at the back of the guy who's on the hammock. It looks yeah, like and those yeah. are those are his arms folded against the back of his head, and that's his hair up above yeah, now, his hands. Now I can legs dangling down. over. But he looks like a squid or something. You know <laughs> what? You know what? That's a uh, Simpsons-style uh, animation. Yeah. So. It is, yeah, it's kind of... Uh, yeah. It's it's very um, yeah it's very uh, Simpsony if you yeah, will yeah. so um, yeah that's that's the look at another closer look at that uh, yeah because I couldn't make it out either it looked like just some blob but uh, yeah that's a, a better look at it so it's and it does um, have a nice peel off savable label on the can so that'll go in the scrapbook. So I would, uh, yeah. I would imagine that uh, Voodoo Brewing is a smaller type of brewery, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah. Their stuff's pretty well distributed. Uh, seems to be throughout Eastern Pennsylvania. And like I said, they sell. They don't brew in Pittsburgh, but they, as to the best of my knowledge, I still haven't been to the Pittsburgh brewery. It's actually in Homestead, and uh, oh. I believe it's just the brew, brew pub there. Um, okay. I think they just sell the stuff that's made in Meadville. Bring so, it in in kegs and do it, yeah. so, here's yeah. here's from their website. Um, let, let's see if they have that one on. Oh, it's there. in Meadville, so that's not that far away, really. Yeah, like an hour from me. Yeah, like yeah, maybe about ninety minutes from me. Yeah, that's like the, that's like the ice. Isn't it like the ice box of Pennsylvania? It's not like one of the always the coldest spots in Pennsylvania. Little, yeah, a little bit north of that. In, in when yeah. you get into Erie, that's where yeah. they always get blasted. Yeah, they get a lot of snow and the cold there. The Vienna Lager. Yeah, look at that Vienna Lager. <laughs> yeah, that is good. <laughs> that is good. Yes, you know, here's their hazy afternoon. Uh. Yeah, it says not not currently available. Uh, seasonable cans. No, they haven't updated their website. They put out the beer, but haven't updated the website. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Maybe it's sold out already. Now, yeah, Ruben's in the chat. He says, "Yeah, correct. They only brew in Meadville, and uh, they Thank have you, two Ruben. other brew pubs, Erie and Homestead, in addition to oh, okay. their uh, yeah. Original. I didn't know they had one in Erie. So Homestead, huh? Oh, and that um, and that development along the river. There, is that where it is? Actually, it's up above that in uh, uh, one street up above the main drag through the uh, through Homestead. Oh. Now, look yeah. at this beer. This is interesting, man. So they got their Voodoo Nitro Coffee, which which always perks my ears up. But they got this Voodoo Nitro Tea. Huh. Cold, cold brewed tea blended served on nitrogen. Well, that'd be interesting, probably. Yeah. That would I love I love this I love different stuff man that 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 mm -hmm. that's that's super cool so this the, yeah. they're they're brewing a tea a nitro tea nitro tap tea that's that's a great idea though because people who want who go in and are the designated driver who can't drink yeah. or whatever then you got something for them that's a little but, unique this is interesting yeah voodoo nitro tea is a house blend. Of organic red and white herbal teas, which I love. I I I drink, I drink a lot of tea as well. I don't talk about it, but I do. 
um, slightly sweetened with organic cane sugar and served on nitro. Yeah. That's got to be the smoothest. You know, you know what? And cold brewing it. Uh-huh. Makes it really smooth. It gets rid of all that acid, it seems yeah, like. Yeah. You cold brew it like you do cold brew coffee, and then you serve it nitro, so it's got to be just so smooth. Yep. Uh, slightly sweet, naturally sweet from that cane sugar. Dude, I love this. I yeah. love that they are doing th this. Is yeah, so that is. Great. That's a really good idea because they can serve that on tap right next to the beer. So somebody yeah. sits down and one guy, one person's having a beer, the other one's driving. They can have a tea that looks like yeah. a beer. <laughs> it it, it, I mean, it looks like a beer. Look, it's got a one finger head on it. It's. Uh, I mean, it, it's a great glass. I love the. <laughs> I love the like glass. A craft tea. That's I have not heard of that. And, and I have not heard of anybody serving nitro tea. Now that's a thing. Now I have to go looking for nitro tea. Thank yep. you, Voodoo Brewery. Yeah. Well, you can have a nitro tea while you while you cook in your cast iron on your uh, salt planks. Dude, I told it's, <laughs> it's gonna be here tomorrow. My salt. Uh, my salt tile will be here tomorrow. I will oh, okay. have, I will officially be a salt tile owner, and uh, I only ordered one though. So okay, all right. Uh, Abby, you have it next week. Is so, that the slab you talking about? You put on a grill? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's a a two inch. It, it, I got a smaller one, so I know they come bigger. But I got a eight an eight inch. Um, by two inches thick uh, uh, salt tile. It's literally just a huge tile of Himalayan salt. And uh, you can cook on it on your stove anywhere. I mean, on your stove, mm -hmm. on a campfire, if you will. I mean, I, you know, you'd have to be careful over direct fire, I would imagine. But yeah, on the grill, and you don't need to salt your food. It just, it, it gets it from, it, it's... You know, I won't geek out on it because I am pretty excited about it. But uh, I imagine you put some shrimp in that bad, Larry. Yeah, just okay. Oh, you're already on YouTube. You're watching our show. However you watch it, but if you're on YouTube already, after our show, <laughs> <laughs> YouTube salt tile uh, cooking or just anything like that, and you'll you'll go down that whole rabbit hole of. Uh, yeah. And pretty soon you'll have a salt tile too. <laughs> yeah, and 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 the, the kicker is it was like eleven bucks on on Amazon okay. for this for this particular tile. They're not a, they're not incredibly expensive. They can get expensive if you order stuff with it, you know, a carrier and all those sorts of things. Yeah, but I mean, that's not too bad to try it out and see if you like it. Yeah, it's it's not too bad to get your foot in the door with it. You know, thirteen dollars, fifteen dollars, whatever the case may be. The smaller one, I think I'm gonna like because I can put it in the freezer as well. And and then you can serve cold stuff on it as well. So you can put ice cream on it. You mm -hmm. could uh, do all sorts of yummy things. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So it, yeah. it's – wait a minute. Did I say yummy? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yep. And we got it on no the – going back. Forever. Yeah. Oh, man. On the internet. It's going to be sent out to alien – Alien civilizations are going to be like, Joe, so <laughs> you, know, oh it, you know what, Joe? It was a slip of the tongue. I can understand where it would accidentally, anything could come out of anyone's mouth. At least you did not consciously type it intentionally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like, oh my God, did I just say yummy? I never say yummy. Why did I say yummy? That's... I mean, because you're passionate about your salt tile. That's yeah. why. Oh my God. That was. <laughs> I don't. I don't <laughs> quite get my man car tore up, but there's a rip in it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, we, we, we crease it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, not even a rip. But yeah, just a, a little wrinkle. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you definitely got to put a crease in it, right there. <laughs> oh my god! So, uh, Mark, what do you have, my friend? I'm having a premium ale. So I just want to let you guys know that ahead of time that it is a premium ale. Okay. Foster's premium ale. Foster's. Oh, Foster's. It's the oil can, the 25 ounce can. Now you're having the green can, which I'm is... having a green can. So it's the ale. Yeah. And it says um, celebrated worldwide. So it's got to yeah. be good. Yeah. It's got to be I've, good. I've had this a couple times, but 
It's been a while. And I don't care what people from Australia say. It's Australian. It's got yeah. It's got a kangaroo it's, on it. It's, it's gotta be got to be got a kangaroo and everything. And they have commercials that tell you yeah. so. Got to be Australian. <laughs> And it was it was yeah. only two forty nine at the store. <laughs> I'm I'm out of the loop. When did they add the uh, green can ale? I only oh, ever oh knew my god. Years ago. It's been four or five I, years since I've seen it. Yeah, but I, nice I, and clear. I, I, it's a nice copper color, clear, decent head. But it's that real. It looks impressive, but it fades away really quick. There's not much to it. Yeah, I've had this a couple times, and I've logged it on untapped, and I've given it two, two, you know, two stars or whatever. Yeah, it's better than an adjunct logger, logger but not much. Yeah. So <laughs> it's got a little, bit of malt. it's got a little bit of malt to it. Yeah, and um, so it's got a little bit more flavor than your typical like like regular Fosters. But for an ale, it does, it is approaching adjunctness. <laughs> which is which is a feat now yeah. it is brewed in the u.s from imported ingredients it says so, so i don't know where is it brewed is it brewed uh is it a is it a miller i'm i'm Coors? on their i'm on their website and of course there's an age blocker boo boo you know i took a picture of it there we go there's an age blocker on here, and I'm I'm, I'm born in 1930 here, so we, we are definitely in. Uh, yeah, so here's the premium ale, uh, yeah. Yeah. right right from Foster's, and it's not clickable. Wow, that's uh -huh. so I gotta I gotta click on the beer. Isn't that gotta, stupid? That's lame. That look at that. They've got the. <laughs> you just you should be able to just click on it, and you can't. Look at that. I'm clicking all day. Hey. I got to click on – I've got a picture of two beers. How hard would it be to make it hey. clickable? Yeah. Ba bad beer, bad website. Oh, my yeah. God. So, yeah, I got to go up here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the premium ale now is uh, – let me see. Let me make it a little bigger here. Ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Oops. So, yeah, it's brilliant copper color, Mark. Yeah. Come on. Okay. I just said copper. I'm sorry. Really? Uh, caramel and fruit aroma, nicely balanced maltiness, mm. accentuated by rich caramel notes in a slightly sweet character. Mm. Uh, Foster's Premium Ale is a 5.5% alcohol by volume ale with a brilliant copper color that delivers a rich, <laughs> really proud of the brilliant copper color, <laughs> earthy beer drinking experience with a smooth caramel finish. Yeah, I was so enthusiastic. <laughs> you know? Now, now uh, on Untapped, we get twenty-two thousand ratings on here. Uh, Two hundred seventeen in the last thirty. A two point eight one. <laughs> yeah, I gave it a two. I mean, it's, it's drinkable, but there's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing to it at all. I mean, it just yeah. is what it is. Yeah, it just it's. Uh, yeah, there's there's Mark's picture of the uh, premium ale. So. Um. Yeah, not much to say other than that. I did all I could. You know, I did, I gave it all I could, right? Yeah, there. but for for two forty nine for a twenty five ounce oil can, you know, what? Why not? The the only thing they're missing is to put it in glass so it can be tapped upon with a ski mask on. That's true. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's the <laughs> and by the way we will have a malt liquor update, yeah, malt liquor update coming up in 10 minutes <clears throat> so um <laughs> that that is coming yeah so my next beer is gonna be much better than this i hope yeah now we hope right yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> uh hey tom what beer do you have for us brother i'm starting off with the allagash white oh, oh nice. okay that's a nice one a nice uh belgian style beer from uh portland mm -hmm. maine um, it's, it, it is, it, it is what it is. It's just, uh, it's a very good Belgian style beer, um, well with wheat, clean, crisp, and I don't know, it's good. It's delicious. Now we have, let's see here. I'm going, I'm finding their website and I'm trying to find a quick untapped. Yeah, here we go. A quick untapped link. Um, yeah, see, they have a they have an age wall too, but it's not bad. 
And I like I like that you can actually get a look at what I would imagine is the front of their brewery, probably. Uh, so they do tours, obviously, from the sign there. Uh, are they in Maine? Is that why there's a Maine symbol up there? I think they yeah. are. Yeah. Um, it seems like I'm gonna have to get up there one of these summers to Maine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going I mean, up there this summer. They, they supposedly have a shit ton of breweries up there. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I've it's, heard that they, there's a lot up there. Yeah. It they got Bissell be, Brothers. They got Foundation. They got they got a bunch of them up there. That'd be a fun. That'd be a fun road trip. Mm. Um, so it's available what, in 12 ounce bottles and on draft. Uh, I like that they have a serving temperature too. So it's available year round, 5.1% ABV. Uh, the hops are Nugget Crystal and uh, what is that? Uh, Czech, Czech sauce. Czech sauce. Coriander. You getting any of that? Orange peel? Oh, definitely. It's um, like a, it tastes like a whip buyer a little bit. Okay. Like a whip. But it's, I don't know. That's a wide variety in the temperature range. So you got from 38 degrees all the way to 50. And I would imagine the closer you get to 50, the more you're tasting this beer. Um, but it's 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 well decorated. Look at that, man. That's a lot of awards, man. A lot of golds in there. GABF golds, too. So that that's enough of a time span from 2002, from, from 1998. Till 2015, this thing has won gold medals. So uh, that, that's a, that's a, that speaks for that white right there. That's a solid one. There's not not too many of them that are that are. Uh, then here we go on Untapped. 264,000 ratings. Uh, 3,600 in the last 30 days. 3.78. It's a solid one. 13 IBUs they actually gave it on here. So. Uh, it's, that's that's pretty darn solid right there, man. I like this guy, the guy, the last guy that checked in, Delonica D, drinking it at Shell. So he's drinking it at the gas station while he's going out. <laughs> 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 and he gives it an eh. He gives yeah. it like, like, yeah. our, like our friend Neri. Eh. Yeah. 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 As the guy's pour, uh, pouring his gas in. Yeah, as he's pouring the gas in, he's getting a little fumes there. Well, we got we got a little. What, what's happening here? What's the? Well, you know that that's not bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know? that's an interesting photo. That's yeah. uh, that's um better that's than it. Yeah. You know. I'll bet she swallows. <laughs> <laughs> that was. The beer. Well done. <laughs> what are you guys thinking about? Yeah. I meant the beer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> ding ding. Yeah. If you if you sickos thought I meant anything, that's, yeah. that's your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how could anyone possibly think? That's your own that? damn fault, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. your own damn fault. You're you're the one that led to that conclusion. I didn't. I was. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I was still clearing my throat and hadn't finished my sentence yet. Yeah. And you know, so I don't know what you guys are talking about, sickos. You know. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, Mario in Arizona. How you doing, man? Uh, yeah, that was. Oh my god, that was hilarious. That was good. Yeah, I needed that one after using that particular word that gave me the creature yeah. man card earlier. Yeah, creature man card a little bit. No. <clears throat> yeah, so that that kind of gives it the quick, um, you know, uncrease of the card there. So what are you, what are you drinking there, Ruben? Uh, I haven't opened it yet to try and see if I get some smoke, but oh, let me yeah. see here. Mystery. Oh, smoke. I did get a little bit of smoke. Yeah, I don't know if you got saw it, but it was a little bit. But while uh. What Bump said, I've never seen Fosters in the green can either, so maybe it's a Pennsylvania thing. Huh, okay, yeah, maybe they just – I've seen it here in Georgia for yeah. five years at least probably. Yeah, I, I see. But maybe Pennsylvania's too. buyers are actually smart and they just have we don't kind of bring just, in the green just can. just don't want to buy that. <laughs> so, so I'm really excited for the beer I'm having tonight. Uh, a friend of mine got this for me. He was up in Maine, like we were talking about oh. uh, a couple weeks ago. He got me a beer from Maine Brewing Company. Ooh. It's called – Another one. That's Another good... one. IPA. It's uh, an IPA 
it was bottled on 5, 16, 17, 7 percent IPA. I don't know anything else about it, but is it a New England um, style or? Uh, it doesn't look like it. It looks pretty mm -hmm. clear to me. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe West Coast style. Yeah. Is that your first time? <clears throat> What's that? The first time trying it. I've never had anything from Maine Brewing Company before, so. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, they make stuff. It almost tastes like a New England style, but it's not hazy at all. It's super juicy. A lot of like orange, grapefruit, papaya, pineapple. I mean, it's super refreshing and does not taste like 7% at all. Mm, okay, so well, you're right on because this this is uh, I'm I'm uh, actually looking at their website. Uh, so we <clears throat> uh, will go to their website. Nice and clean. I like that. Oh, that's a very clean website. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very right. Minimalist. Yeah, um, and and that's the description they give: grapefruit, tangerine, uh, resinous, clean malt palate, mm -hmm. uh, Cascade Citra and Simcoe. Um, just a nice, simple, I like that, man. Uh, Indian pale ale, 7%. And then on, on untapped 66,000 ratings on here, man, mm. 1400 in the last, uh, 30 days, uh, a 4.16 bottle caps, man. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool too. Their, their advertising on their bottles is so plain that they look yeah. like the beer speak for itself. Yep. So I really, I think that's kind of neat. Yeah. You know, when you make such a good product, people will seek it out. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was exciting. This is my first beer I've ever had from that brewery, and it's not letting me down. So. Cool. Well, there you go, Tom. You need to get up there. Seriously, though, they they also make um, they make the lunch. The yeah, dinner. lunch and dinner. I, I've had the lunch before, but I've never. I, I guess you can only get the dinner at the brewery, supposedly. Are they stouts? Is that what those oh. are? Yeah, okay. No, they're IPAs, I believe. Yeah, okay. I'm seeing that here. I'll share this with you on Untapped. Yeah, because you know how they show the similar beers. And right here on the side, you got Lunch, Woods and Waters. Is, is another one. You've got, uh, oh, I guess so every year there's a different variant, uh, of course, of that. Another one. Uh, let, let click on Lunch really quick, and we get, uh, what do we get? Da, 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 da. It's going slow here for some reason. There it goes finally. Yeah, uh, another IPA. Ooh, man. Yeah, they know how to make IPAs, I guess, huh? Yeah. They, 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 they're they kind of good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is our East Coast version of, of a West Coast IPA. <laughs> no, no, come on. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's, it, uh, so in intense hot flavors and aromas with tropical and citrus fruits and pine dominant. They were they were actually making this before the New England style IPA came out. Yeah, that's right. So they were just they were just doing their own thing. So, could you say that they created the New England style IPA without knowing it? Mm, I don't know. I think uh, the Alchemist with Hetty Topper was the first New England style mm. IPA. Okay. As, yeah. as far as I know. The first like New England style, yeah. Yeah, it, but it, they didn't call it that. Mm-hmm. And here's dinner. Dinner is another IPA. Yeah. Well, that has a 4.66. Holy cow. That's Look at cool. that. That's that's solid, oh, yeah. man. That's For like 30... a cult beer. If, if with that many re reviews and a 4.6, that's a cult beer there. I mean, that's people are really seeking that one out. And Mo was really good also. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. look at this. So they have a peeper, a lunch, Mo, another one, a Zoe. Zoe, maybe. Zoe, yeah. Uh, a tiny, beautiful something. <laughs> uh, mean old Tom. <laughs> uh, woods and Waters uh, and King Titus and Dinner. Huh. King Titus cool. has got to be. Th these ones have got to be. Yeah, Porter. Here's a Porter. I would love to know what that. I mean, if, if they brew yeah. IPAs that well, I mean it. Look at that, man! That just looks. Port Maine, okay. Kind of class it up a little bit, don't they? Uh -huh. I love, I love the bottle. I, I like the labeling. The yeah, the glass. bottle is uh, uh, one point well, sixteen point nine ounces, which is kind of cool too. It's like a bigger. Okay. It's not a bomber, but not a know, bomber. So okay. 
So it's a half liter bottle. I think then. it's yeah. in milliliters. I think that's five hundred. I I don't mm -hmm. know. I am American, so yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a <laughs> half liter bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Here's their amber ale. That's the Zoe, seven point two percent. So they don't. They're not brewing anything tiny here. This ain't. Yeah. Uh, look at that. You got dark resin, uh, raisin, chocolate, biscuit, pine, evergreen, citrus. Wow, that's complicated for an amber. Yeah, uh -huh. there's a lot there. A lot going on. There's a lot going on in that one, man. Look at that. Man, yeah. Ra this is an amber. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> so that's an amber. Uh, you've got dark raisin, chocolate. I mean, that sounds like. Like maybe you're doing a hoppier uh, version of a of a that almost sounds like a barley wine. Yeah, yeah. you know, except for like the a hoppy, part. like a yeah. barley, a hoppy barley wine. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they're really they're really out there, man. I like that. That's uh, that's very different. Cool. Thanks for thanks for sharing that one. That was that was interesting. Very deep. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Barrick? Doing good, guys. How are y'all? What's up, Barrick? And we got uh, King and Freddie in the chat as well, man. How you guys doing? <clears throat> hey, real quick, man. Let, let, let's talk a little bit about about uh, what's happening with uh, the Warriors and, uh, and and oh no 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 you know what let's go let's do the let's do the uh, malt liquor update. I want to do that first, man. Yeah, that's go. more that's more exciting. Okay, yeah. Do you want to get to what Barrick's drinking, Joe, or do you want to do the malt? Liquor? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about what Barrick's drinking. Yeah. He's... All righty. I tell you what, right before I got on, I you know I've been trying this stuff from J Dubs. Oh yeah, yeah. And I tried their blueberry IPA. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I took two sips and dumped it. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, <bad idea. laughs> I did them a favor, right. huh? Blueberry IPA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not good. Oh, wow. Then I tried. I'm drinking this, and all these are local stuff. This is from, from Bradington, Florida. It is V Twin Motorworks Brewing, and it is a Vienna style lager. Hmm. Huh. So what's? And it's actually pretty good. Okay. I'm not going to dump it. Yeah. You, you, you gotta, you, so you're dumping that one down your throat. You're dumping both of them. Just <laughs> yeah, both of them, but one I dumped in the sink, yeah. and one I'm I'm drinking. I mean, this is nothing to write home talk about, but. It's it's not dump worthy. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's at least drinkable. It's it's consumable. Yeah, for, lager, for lager, it's really good. Yeah, actually, I'm quite surprised, and it's only like four seven. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but it's got a little bit of color to it. It's got a nice little. Yeah, I was really surprised when I poured it how mm -hmm. the color came out. Mm -hmm. So I'm done. So some caramel notes and stuff in there, and then. Uh... Probably better than the Fosters, I'm sure. Yeah, it's probably, probably. Oh gosh, night and day difference. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Have you had? Have, did you have the Bell Cow yet from J Dubs? That's the only thing I've had. Yeah, them, yeah, he had that one. I love it. Yeah. I've got, got three or four left in the fridge. Okay, yeah, yeah, I had that. Every time you talk about that one, you mention the name, it just makes me think I have to try that sometime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, did you like it? Yeah, I gave it a four. I just looked it up. Uh, I had a, I went on a spontaneous trip down to Florida in January. We booked the trip on Monday. We left on Friday, and I was asking anybody what was local, and this was one of the things. So I got a six pack of it, and I apparently enjoyed it. <laughs> I recognize the name when you said J Dubs. That's why I looked it up real quick. Oh, okay. On Untapped here. Yeah, and and that's that's oh, the other yeah. that's the other for those of you that aren't familiar with Untapped. It's the beer drinking social app. And we use it like crazy here, as you can tell. And it's really good. You you know, you have a new beer. You're out somewhere. You have your phone. It's an app on your phone. And, and, and it's an app. Uh, you can also go to their website and log beers as well uh, if you're on your computer. But it's a good way, just like Ruben just said, to reference beers too. So you, you've, you've been on a trip or something like that, and you, you log that beer. You can go back and, and, and look it up and, and remember a little bit about your, your experience drinking that beer if you put in enough information. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's also pretty awesome to find out what, what bars around you have. Yeah, mm -hmm. and breweries. 
like mm-hmm. a tap hunter or something like that. It's kind of in the same area. You can yeah, like, yeah. Do with the cervix at that point in time, see what people are drinking. It's just oh, it's just nice to see update and see what people. See yeah, people yeah. That's a, that's another good point too, Tom. Thanks for pointing that one out. So it's it's really good for all that stuff, like just like Tom said. So if you're in a new area, you're traveling, you want to know where to go to, what bars might be good, and what people are drinking currently. Like, what's the new trend? You know, what's the latest thing in that brewery as well? It's one thing to find out what's a good brewery, and then you go there, have a couple of their worst beers, and you're like, oh, man, that sucked, you know? <laughs> but, you know, if you're able to see, hey, this is what people are drinking right now, this is what's popular, then, you know, you, you try that, and you're like, hey, that's a whole different thing, right? It's a whole different experience, you know? So, and and whatever you do, don't say that word, yummy, you know? <laughs> Don't, <laughs> if you use yummy in your description, then we have to like boot you from the show. I used it, but that's, that's by it's accident. your show. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was by pure accident. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> uh, on that note, Bum, give us your update, man. The malt liquor update. Okay. Well, got to get Billy. <laughs> Whoops, got to get Billy D. There he is. All right. There he is. Here. Man, TM. He's drinking a Colt 45 today. He's drinking a Colt 45, and <laughs> so am I. Oh! <laughs> double malt. Look at that. Double malt. Ooh. Yes. That's a 24-ouncer, though, isn't it? Yes. A 24-ouncer. Okay. Uh, and I have some stats. Since I am the stat man, I've got some stats here to go along before I give my report. This, first of all, is the first Colt 45 I've ever consumed in my life. Wow. Okay. You're missing and this out. is also the first malt liquor I have consumed since August 11th, 1986. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he knows the date. Isn't that hilarious? And if you're, if, if for anybody who's curious, uh, how many days that is, that totals up to include, inc- including extra leap year days. That totals oh up to 11,237 days. Oh my God. <laughs> so we want to know is it worth the wait? I don't know. This may, yeah. I don't know. This may go. To, this may be the bad beer show tonight because Barricade is Blueberry IPA. You have your Fosters. Yeah, August eleventh, so, nineteen eighty six. Yeah, and that huh. night, the only reason I I know that night was when I had my last malt liquor is because of the circumstances attached to the drinking of that la- that night. And oh, you got some. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. No. Some of that. No. The only. The it's only been time. that long. <laughs> One thousand. <laughs> Eleven thousand. The only thing. The only thing I got that night is uh, the bed spins. <laughs> that was the only thing that happened to me in bed that night. So. Man. Yeah, so I've never seen the double malt one. Is that like eight percent or what is that? It's I don't from what the little I've read and they I, they don't reveal too much on their website from what I've heard. I don't think it's any higher in alcohol. It's just oh. double. There's double the malt to give you more quote unquote more <laughs> taste. Yeah, <laughs> sweeter probably. Yeah, so let's uh, it's probably a bad thing. Yeah, a little bit more rice in that one, right? <laughs> Boy, could I go for a blueberry IPA right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying, really, is that you could never be part of the MLDC. Wow. Wow. You know, I was going to have this. Uh, I've, I've had this in the fridge for about a month now. I was going to try it like two weeks ago when I was sick because 209 Jay Jones, I watched a video of his where he was saying that when his little kids are sick, he gives them a tablespoon of malt liquor. Oh my God! <laughs> he he said the recommended dosage is like one tablespoon for every ten pounds of body weight. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Malt liquor, the There's miracle a, drug. <laughs> so he he's doctor. Um, he, he's doctor. What was his name again? 
Oh, that's 209 Jay Jones. No, he's yeah. the referee. We, there actually is a doctor in the MLDC. Oh, Not my God. Jesus. No, they call, they call his name is uh, Steph, Stephen uh, Malturin. They call him Dr. Malturin. <laughs> and actually, I was going to mention him anyway. Great segue, Joe. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, he um there hasn't been a whole lot going on uh in the drama aspect even even with me being off last week or uh, no doing no report last week. There hasn't been a whole lot going on with the feuding and the drama and so I've been watching some of the next level guys, the guys that don't wear the masks and that don't, you know, do a voice or anything. And Stephen Malturin is one of those guys. I've been watching a lot of his videos. They call him Dr. Malturin because the more you listen to him, you can tell he's a pretty deep intelligent guy you can you can really tell that and uh he was commenting on the fact that there has been really nothing going on lately with the mldc superstars and uh i what i didn't realize was uh, uh St stephen malturin got an award earlier this year a malt liquor award he got the uh regular guy award <laughs> as, as far as like a no gimmick no mask uh, no, no props guy. So, so there is another award that I didn't know about. Okay. Right. But any, anyway, as far as anything else goes uh, in the MLDC, uh, the only other thing happening, loot, loot bag Larry, who I told you got abducted by a UFO a couple of weeks ago. Oh uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Is he back? Yeah. Um, is he okay. He's he actually got brought back briefly. The UFO brought him back a couple of days ago and dropped him off just long enough for him to chug a 40. Then he went back up in the UFO. <laughs> he did He did like a two-minute chug of a, I think it was a Mickey's. And then the oh, UFO God. came back down and sucked him up and off he went. And so once it. again, I don't know when he'll be back. Boy, is this beer bad. So we, we do know that, that he's okay yeah so far yeah. and and yeah. they and, and the aliens were courtesy enough uh you know they were nice yeah. enough to bring him back so he could at least have some malt liquor in his yeah. life so what we know now is if they're the aliens do not have malt liquor so right. that's why they're visiting they want to know how to make right. malt liquor they're right. trying right. to get they're malt liquor get their themselves. hands on it yeah. yeah right it just proves we are more advanced than they are <laughs> right that's true liquor. they don't know how to do good malt liquor mm -hmm. so um and the only other thing going on is uh, Mark's old friend, uh, Bruce Forty, who's now known as 40 Ounce Malt Liquor TV. He's been doing a video a week. He did actually did one last week on Colt 45 and showed off his collection of 40s and gave a little history oh, of the cool. brand. <laughs> Excuse me. Man, is it, <laughs> man, does this stuff suck. <laughs> you gotta, just got to let it out. Just belch. I mean, yeah. That's, you know. Whoa. This stuff is horrible. And uh, so anyway, he, he did a um, another video uh, uh, this past week celebrating the return of Mickey's in glass bottles, 40-ounce glass bottles. And I've seen several other of the MLDC celebrating that fact. They were all upset that, I guess, for the last couple of years that Mickey's has been in plastic bottles. Now they're all waiting for President Donald Trump to uh, make... Um, old English, uh, put it back in glass bottles, as, <laughs> as he did uh, for Mickey's. Okay, yeah. So it's the Trump effect in the mm -hmm. malt liquor sure. world. Yeah. Making America and, great again. Yeah, and that's M the... Uh, MMLGA, make malt liquor great again. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if Joe is still here or not, but that is uh, that is my report for, for this week. <sighs> So is, that, is the rest of that a drain pour bum, or are you going to actually finish that 24-ouncer? I'm sure as hell not going to finish it before the end of the show, but okay. I'll, pr I'll probably finish it. But I will say, how these guys can chug this stuff, oh. this is a 24-ouncer. How they can chug 24 ounces. Well, it's the ounces, only way to do it, I guess. You need to label yeah. out. Label out. Let, a, let alone 40 ounces. <laughs> Does wow. it say the ABV on their bum? I don't... Uh, no, they're pretty. They they don't put it on there. No, nah. is it un untapped? I wonder. I'm, I'm sure, sure it is. is. Yeah, but no, it's not on here. And from I think, um, uh, possibly, uh, Bruce Forty may have mentioned this in his video. This is kind of the 
it's kind of like the 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 uh, forgotten stepchild um, of the Colt Forty Five uh, family because this I don't even know if this gets mentioned on the Pabst website as far as their brands go. They have all the other ones. They have the high gravity lager, regular Colt Forty Five, the whatever ice they put out, or and they don't have this one listed. And it's kind of it's almost like a secret brand. And I have heard other people say that they can't get it in their area. So do they sell 40s in Pennsylvania? Can you get 40s? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I see on Untapped it says 5.61% okay. for, the, for the double malt. And the, and the regular one is uh, <coughs> uh, 8%. So that's so less. Double malt. malt's actually more. Anyway, that's ABV, yeah. Than regular. Yeah, See, I didn't think the regular was eight. Not that I know, but uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm just trusting on tap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're putting half the malt and they're telling you double malt. Yeah, yeah what's up so. with that? Yeah, how could there be well, maybe more the, double, 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 double the malt half the sugar? Twice as much malt left over. Hey, hey, yeah. bum, you're kind of messing up here because you've got your co-host holding the holding the can correctly. Oh yeah, um, well you know what? The way the can, the the blueprint for the cans is, I guess I could have been doing this the whole time. If the can is not the mouth hole is not configured right, you have to do barcode out. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. So oh, so they, you haven't really thought about that. Yeah. They they yeah. didn't they didn't think that all the way through, did they? Yeah, and I guess and actually your left hand or the right handed too. Yeah, and a lot of them a lot of them uh, will say label out when they're holding cans, which is when you think about it is incorrect because there's no label. Yeah. Yeah, true. Logo out. Logo out. Yes, there's no label on the can. The well, can I don't, I don't, I don't know that you can that you can correct the malt liquor. Uh, no. Establishment. You, you know. So thank you for the update there. You know what, Ruben? You just reminded me. I had. <clears throat> you're you're having a Yingling, right? Yep. I just mm -hmm. had some Yingling flavored bratwurst. Um, oh! Did you get them at the store? Yeah, I got them at the store. I can't get Yingling, but I can get Yingling yeah, can. flavored bratwurst. Mm -hmm. Yep. Holy cow! And they were so good. And now I've got, um, and I, I don't think those ones were for were from uh, uh, Johnsonville, but uh, the the one that I got some hatch. Oh. They have hatch green chili bratwurst that are from Johnsonville, and that's the ones that I had uh, yesterday, and those are delicious. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah, so that's 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 good beer food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to go I'll, with I'll your... have to try to find those. That sounds yeah. awesome. I've had the Yingling before, and they do a good job there, but I haven't had the, the Hatch chili. Yeah. But that would be a good one. Yeah, had the hatch. Those are terrific. And then I, I had them with. There's this. Um, there's this new mustard. French's came out with a. Let, let me just show you on my phone here. French's came out with a barbecue mustard sauce that's tangy. It's sweet and tangy Ooh. mustard sauce. Ooh. So you can see Ooh. that. Oh yeah. And and it is just. So that would be like what I. Up, uh, it'd be like a Carolina barbecue sauce or a Carolina mustard. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a Carolina. Yeah, exactly. Whoa! Whoa! That just popped Whoa. off. Oh, Jesus! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey yeah, exactly. I love that. that Made your hand. That I took the cage. I took. Whoa! This is a big one. Um, <laughs> I, I was waiting to show this, but this is the. Um, I took the cage off of it. This is the Game of Thrones one. Oh, nice. From, oh, okay. Uh, from Oma Gang. So wow. I took the Which cage one? off. Which Game of Thrones? That's the new one, right? Yeah, yeah. bend the knee. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I took yeah. the cage off, and the cork popped itself. So, wow. <laughs> Did you have it in the freezer? That's a little scary, isn't it? Yeah, it kind of did scare me a little bit. But <laughs> there's a cork. It worked. Cool. But, um, yeah, so this is, I think it's like 9%, a gold nail, brewed with honey. Ooh. And this one, I'll just go real quick, because this one, when we were there a couple weeks ago, they were setting up their, um, 
was it was revealed over Memorial Day weekend, and they were having a big. Um, they were actually going to have the Game of Thrones thrown there. At oh, really? Day, and they were going to debut this beer. Yeah. So, how right, freaking cool is that, man? To actually have the throne there. Yep. Yep. They did. So, major head. <laughs> That's what she said too. Major head. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Uh, that's, a, that's a good if you like belgian style ales this is mm, it does it does have a slightly sweet and kind of grassy floral kind of note on it mm. oh this is really close to um to duval you know oh. it's kind of in that same it's a little sweeter than duval but right in that is same it? that same line is it more like a triple than a the blonde or yeah, it's gonna be closer to a triple. I mean a belt <laughs> gold nail is probably gold closer nail, yeah. to a triple than a double, right? Yeah. Quad oh, yeah, tends to have double, yeah. quad tends to have the uh, like the dark fruit. Is that right? Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, this see look at that that color. That's kind of a like a straw colored, lots of nice carbonation. Yeah. So can you taste the honey? Like that sweetness from the honey? Or is it just like a sweetness? A little bit. I mean, it's it's slightly sweet. I wouldn't say you could taste that, but you can't taste the, the extra sweetness. But you still get that Belgian yeast kind of, um, yeah. that little bit of that funky kind of thing. But it's moderated a little bit by the sweetness. So it's pretty good. I got it for, it was like ten ninety nine for the bottle here. That's not bad. That's not, that's not yeah. bad. Okay. Here, I, I want to show from their website here that they've got three different bottles. Oh, okay. Actually, for that beer. So, um, here you go. So these are the the three different bottles that. So I must have. Yeah, you've got the one on the end here with the red. Yeah, I've got the one on the right. Yeah. Um. So they've got three different ver. It's the same beer. It's just three different bottles. Oh, so if okay. you're if you're a hardcore collectible, then I guess you're going to have to get all three bottles. Um, but here's a note. Uh, Alma Gang is not currently distributed in Idaho, Mississippi, Montana, or Wyoming. Uh, so you won't be able to find this beer in those states. So uh, otherwise, you should be able to find it um, and, you know, and, and get you some of that. So... It's uh, it's brewed out. It's it's due out Memorial Day, so it's it's a really new release. So, yeah, I don't know if you guys watch the show or not, but the one on the left is the Lannisters. The one in the middle is the Starks, and the one on the right is the Targaryens. So oh, different, okay. three different they're families. Different, yeah, three different families. Okay. House okay. sigils. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. It's such a bad show, but I never get right. a chance to fully go through it. It's it's such a shame. It's a great show. It's, it's a great movie. show. I, I, I like the books a lot too, but yeah. Now it, there's 1,720 ratings on here, uh, and that's dead even with uh, in the last 30 days too, because it's a new release. Uh, mm -hmm. Just added 518. So yeah, uh, and it gets a 3.8. Oh yeah, I'm giving caps. it. I'm giving it a four. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> I'd compare kind of. Because I just had a Duval a couple weeks ago, and I mean, it seems to me to be right in that same, right in that same wheelhouse as far as flavor profile. A little sweeter, maybe, but it's got that, um, that same overall stuff. So good stuff. Would you age but, it? Yeah. Would you try aging it? You think it would? I mean, what it, it couldn't really mellow out if you aged it, right? Can you taste alcohol? No, I can't taste the alcohol now. There's no real bitterness. I mean, I think. You could age it, but I think it would only – I don't think this is the kind of beer that would improve with age. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think this would be the kind of beer that would – you might lose a little bit of the sweetness. I mean, the flavor would still be good, but I don't think you would gain anything by aging it. I mean, you could definitely sit around for a few years and still be very drinkable. But, you know, it's, it's still going to have that funky kind of thing, and I think once the sweetness fades away, that might be a little bit more prominent. But – Good stuff. Yeah, it's. It, I, I forget the one that I had the uh, the Game of Thrones beer that I had, but it, it was it was pretty good as well. I do remember that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Oma Gang just they, they make good stuff, man. They don't yeah, make, they do. They don't make they do. junk. So it's it's no, not they you know. do a good job. But the thing that was interesting when I was there last week, and I think I talked about this, was that all their Belgian sours, all the sour ales are brewed in Belgium and then shipped over to to the brewery oh, where they really? bottle it. Oh, really? Yeah. Because they only have one brew system. They only have one brew kettle. It's a big one, but they only have one kettle. Yeah. So I was like, well, how do you brew all that beer with just one kettle? Well, we do all our sours come over from Belgium, and then we bottle them here. Is, is, it, door? is it like a famous brewery that contracts for them? Well, they're owned by they're well, owned by yeah. Google, so yeah, they are. They've got access to all the all the stuff. Do about Morgad or something? They, there's a bunch of breweries owned by them. Yeah, yeah. So that's how they that's how their capacity is as much as it is, given the fact that they only have one brew line basically. <laughs> a third of their beers come out, get shipped over from Belgium, and get bottled, but they don't have to brew it. That, that that seemed real interesting to me that you had said that um, when you gave us that update when you went there that they only have one, you know, system because that's like wow, you know what I'm saying? It's a, uh, it's a thirty, I think it's a thirty barrel or thirty two barrel, Ruben. I mean, I don't know what the sizes are, but it's a, I mean, it's a pretty big system. It's like a thirty or fifty barrel system. Yeah, thirty two is pretty small actually for Oma Gang. I mean, I would expect theirs is way larger than that. Maybe three hundred is that too big? That's an awful big brew. That's kettle. pretty big. Yeah, and it was big, but I maybe a hundred barrel. I think there would be two or three setups, you know. Yeah, but they only maybe, have one. Yeah, maybe it's fifty barrels, and then they do uh, a double batch, so it fills yeah. up hundred. They do 100 have a lot fermenters. of fermenters. They have a lot of fermenters. Um, yeah. You know, and they do twenty four, um, twenty four hours a day, five days a week. Is their schedule About 24 hours a day? Well, it could be 32 barrels. And then, then uh, if they do three batches per day, that fills up 100 barrel fermenter. So, yeah, yeah. it could I mean, be. Yeah. I, I, but I was kind of surprised based on how much beer they sell and where it is that I only saw yeah, one. Yeah, it's all over the place. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when, when you figure. You know, what was it, three states, four states that I listed that they're not distributed in? So that's that's a lot of beer, man. Yeah. yeah. They're moving a lot of beer. And when you've got it down to where you're still taking two days off a week for all your all your guys, that's that's pretty insane. Mm -hmm. they, they've, yeah. they've really got themselves organized pretty well. Um, yeah. Boy, if anything went wrong in that system, though, you're effed in the butt. I mean, yeah. you're, you know. <laughs> exactly. You have no backup. You have no backup. You're screwed. You know, yeah. like, uh, it, 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 it seems like they, you know, especially with Duvall's backing, it seems like, like you could get at least one more freaking system. No, like <laughs> the, the way the building is designed. I mean, they, they kind of built it, you know, all that. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. They're going to have to do something at some point, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. But right now they seem to be making enough, you know, have enough capacity. Yeah, they're but. they're they're uh, yeah, because that that their stuff is great, you know. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, really quick, and and this is as we're going out here. Uh, uh, Anheuser Busch InBev purchased a stake in RateBeer dot com. Oh, um, so this was an interesting one that I didn't know anything about. Um, Bum brought this to my attention here in the pre-show. Um, so, uh, and I still haven't had a chance to read it, but I'm just, you know, trying to catch up now. Uh, I don't know why, uh, I, well, obviously rate beer, you know, if, if, if uh, InBev purchased the stake in it, I, I don't know how you could trust rate beer now. I don't know how no. you could, uh, you know, cause they own a number of craft breweries as well. Um, I, I don't know how you could trust anything they say, knowing that InBev is is uh, a partner essentially, right, with uh, with Rate Beer. Um, this is strange to me. Yeah. This is Seems not like they anything they can. What was that? Seems like they're buying anything they can. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I mean, it's 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 we were uh, we were trying to equate it with stuff in the pre-show, and it it to me, it's kind of like um like 
Chevy buying Motor Week or part of Motor Week, like or or uh, uh, I don't know, Con Air getting a piece of, of uh, Consumer Reports, <laughs> or uh, you know, like how do you trust anything they have to say now? Or you know, uh, Whirlpool uh, buying a part of Consumer Reports, like what you know. Yeah, I just I can't imagine it generates that much revenue that they would need to buy it. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's what I was thinking, and I, and I thought Rate Beer's reviews were totally based off users. Mm -hmm. I didn't like which like uh, right? Aren't they? Yeah, they I are. I mean, so. it's it's similar to Beer Advocate. I mean, but yeah, like Beer Advocate, the Bros. There's the two of them. They rate it, so they have their own score. But all the other ones, I thought, were just users like you and I. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, what the reason is. I mean, yeah. other than they could buy it for cheap and put a bunch of ads for InBev products See, now, on it. Now, now, this is an interesting part because they say right here, one brewery, Dogfish Head, has already asked to be removed from the site. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. And I'm sure they're not going to be the last. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, I mean, because I, how could you trust anything? Apparently, they were trying to keep this hidden is the, is the tone that I'm getting here. Because um, yeah, it says right on? here in that sentence above it, the sale is no longer hidden, though the backlash is sure to in, in, ensue. Yeah. So it, it's, yeah. it, it just, I don't get it. I mean, I get it from, I get it from InBev, you know, trying to purchase, a company I get that I get them trying and I get rate beer looking at a ton of money and going you know what we're getting our ass kicked by untapped like 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 beer advocate is to uh, and someone wants to buy us give us money yeah right I, mean, I wonder yeah. how much they sold it for that would be the interesting thing <laughs> that, that would be the interesting thing but it's it you know it's like you're done now like if you thought if you thought untapped was kicking your butt before you're done I mean, now yeah. you've got breweries already asking to be removed from your site. Come on, you're done. Did they sell yeah. a portion, or did they sell the whole website? It sounds like a portion because it it, it definitely says purchases a stake. You know, purchases a stake in rate yeah. beer. Yeah. So, so you you should have sold the whole kit to dollars maybe for half the yeah. Who knows? How but. could you? I don't. I don't I mean. Yeah. They've tried to be sneaky before with like Goose Island and stuff. They still try and hide that. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, you you guys in the past have referred to Rate Beer and Beer Advocate as the MySpace of you know beer sites. Yeah. Well, they they Rate Beer has sealed their fate now with this. Yeah, they seal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you, at least you, among beer geeks. Yeah, that's for right. sure. Well, and apparently amongst breweries too, because yeah. you've got breweries asking to be removed. Yeah, I mean, they you don't want to. You know, if, if look, that, that was the Dogfish Head as an example. Uh, this this piece that that i showed was only written a day ago yeah. so this is fairly new news so as this starts to hit the the waves more i mean i you know if i'm a brewer i don't want my stuff on your site either how do i you know i i don't know who made those ratings i don't know and i don't want any of that coming back on me i don't want that to be a reflection on my beer you know what i'm yeah. saying it I, seems I, like amheiser bush is going to be in the best interest for themselves advertising like mark said their products yeah I, I, you know, you know, they're on the front website or you know any front page or anything advertising their stuff instead of somebody else's stuff that's um, a that's a i mean i i get uh i get anheuser anheuser bush's side of it and i get rate beer side of it because rate beer sees the writing on the wall right they're the yeah. they're the yahoo right they're like okay <laughs> so with the exception that Yahoo was just stubborn and wouldn't sell, ask you know, Jeeves. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the ask Jeeves. <laughs> they're the ask Jeeves. Yeah, like I could understand. You know, someone wants to give me a pile of money. You know, my viewership is down. Everything's down. Everything to do with my website is down. People aren't using it. Is you know, it's just awful. And someone wants to give me a pile of money. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I I get both sides of that. And then Anheuser Busch. I mean, InBev wants to get in there and buy it so they can, like you said, you know, put their product, uh, you know, on, on a, you know, give it the upper hand. But 
once all this is discovered, and if you're trying to keep all of that on the down low, once it's discovered, how how does anybody trust anything? Yeah. 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 As as a beer drinker and a beer fan, I could even see where some beer drinkers and beer fans could defend, and I have I have seen it. They could defend uh, AB InBev's purchase or getting a financial stake in some of the breweries and their justification for doing so. Well, this will help the distribution, and they will keep. They won't meddle. They'll keep things the same. I could see where people would think that with you know th them having their uh, financial interest in in some breweries, but with this, there's no good reason to be had or come up with why they would do this now yeah. now here's a here's another quick part too from this piece and it says uh uh it appears they sold part of the company about eight months ago but oh. how the terms of the deal silent because quote uh because the two sides wanted to get points on the board to prove the value of the partnership without the quote disruption <laughs> of of making it public, yeah. yeah. So they don't want all the beer geeks to get pissed it's, it's, off. Yeah, they, and and now that it's out, and how does that make it any better? Yeah, you, you, yeah. It, that doesn't to me. You better come out right away, and it's not going to make it any better. Like the whole thing is, eh. yeah. you know. If you, you know, ask me, what's, what's interesting to me is like, great beers kind of always been the bastard stepchild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beer advocates always been want number one for years. Now Untapped is, but still, rate beer has always been lower than the other ones. I don't quite understand why they go after that. Yeah, as that's a good, the good other point. Big ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only reason, on, uh, my my opinion, the only reason Untapped is so popular is because they actually have an app that is accessible. Yep. Like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Beer, that makes, that if, makes sense. If they made an app, I mean, who knows what could happen? You know what I mean? That's well, something that easily accessible is untapped. Now, well, in, but, in their piece, they said that they said that you know, uh, and and it is kind of true. Rate beer up until untapped, rate beer and beer advocate were it. They were the two leading oh, yeah. review true. sites, and and we talked about it in the pre-show. Was um, I don't give away too much pre-show. You got to be there to to experience <laughs> it. But you know, some of the conversation we were having about this was. You know, back in the day when I was reviewing very, very actively in, in the early days, and Mark was too, um, there was a lot of pressure to use rate beer. And I always kind of didn't like using rate beer. There was something about it I didn't like. I didn't quite trust its ratings, and it was a little confusing to me. And so I just stuck with Beer Advocate, and I just stuck with Beer Advocate and a few other beer blogs that that – blogged a lot about some of the beers I was reviewing. And so that's how I did my reviews. Um, and there was this huge pressure to use rate beer though. And it was in the, in the early days of my beer reviewing. And now in hindsight kind of always tells the truth, right? Is like, look at this. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know how it's it... funny is I went on the rate beer site and I went to the forums and the, the, uh, the, the threads, titled Rate Beer Sells to AB InBev has 46 pages of comments. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people obviously um, concerned about it. And one person says, minority non-controlling share. Rate Beer wasn't bought by AB InBev. Quit trying to be a dramatic 11-year-old girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, there's obviously a lot of people um, on the Rate Beer community kind of uh, – uh, upset about this, I think. Yeah. I wouldn't care if they put ten dollars in into them. I, it's still a conflict of interest. Yeah, you yeah. can't. You can't. It, and I haven't. I haven't used rape beer in like three years at least. Probably closer been, to five or six years. I'm. I'm gonna say nobody does. I mean, it's. Mm -hmm. It's. <laughs> I, I, rape beer right now at this point is so far behind beer advocate for Christ's sake. I still don't think of rape beer before beer advocate. Mm -hmm. And and Beer Advocate is so far behind. I don't know how either one of these sites didn't have an app by now. I mean, after a year or two of Untapped, yeah. uh, how as, did you as, not make an app? As as Tom said about the Untapped app, 
I mean, the perfect thing about un Untapped is you have a limited amount of characters to type your review. As mm -hmm. I've said before about Beer Advocate and uh, Rate Beer, those are for people with computers, and those are exercises in creative writing. Look at some yeah. of those ridiculous descriptions that some of those people. That's why I don't use either of those sites. Yeah, yeah they yeah. you you read ten thousand words uh, to describe a beer, and when you get done with it, you still don't know what it tastes like. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why Untapped. I mean, if you're out enjoying beer, Untapped is a is a great way to keep track of what you've had. Hey, yeah. and 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 before we before we go out, we've gone very long here. Um, uh, but this this was this was mind blowing when when Bum told me I was like what you know it was like to me that's bigger than any of the other buyouts because you're buying an something that influences you know it, something that influences right there I should just end that sentence right there like you're buying something right. that influences what beer drinkers influences buying decisions yeah that's mm -hmm. that's just it's it's like any any big company yep. buying Consumer Reports or uh, who's the, the who's the other one that J J W yeah exactly yeah like J D Powers and all these other ratings big ratings people that that I mean I can't imagine that at some point a General Motors uh, a Sony or somebody didn't uh, uh, approach Consumer Reports and want to even a piece, right? But you know, Consumer Reports said they probably gave them the yeah, exactly, <laughs> they <them> big time. <laughs> like at some point, you've got to you've got to turn down that money. That's not good mm -hmm. money, you know. If if you plan on staying in business, now to me, like I say, uh, it this is obviously rate beer seeing the writing on the wall. Man, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. we're um, taking the money, putting it in the bank, and. Yeah, whatever There's happens. Drink with happens, an, with yeah. an umbrella in it. We're good. How did they seriously think they were going to keep this a secret? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and then that just that just that just I mean, you you just put salt in the wound right there. I don't see how anybody I you know, we didn't use rape beer before and now it's it's just a a bad name. At least you'll continue to buy um uh that one beer. What's the uh what's that one brewery that in Bev, oh, uh, dogfish, yeah, no, 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 the 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 one that in what was that? Oh, Goose, what, Goose Island, yeah, yeah. Goose Island, yeah, you know, Goose Island kind of upset a lot of people, but people continued to buy Goose Island. You knew that the beer was good beer. Um, this you're done using it, like if there was ever you know, if someone's even mentions, yeah. oh, on rate beer, it get you're gonna be like, what, no way, dude, no way. You know, get that out of here. You know, <laughs> all of a sudden, Bud Ice is uh, five stars on rate. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, or just, or just anything uh, that's under their umbrella. I mean, it could be, it could be Goose Island for Christ's sake. I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know, any anything that would be under their umbrella. How do you trust it? I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't. Yeah. yeah. To me, it's it's even bigger news than when they bought Goose Island. It, it that that's big. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, thank you, Bum, for sharing that. That was a yeah. really, that was a really. Yeah, good... I didn't hear that. That's That's right. I just, I just assumed you. I'm, I, I'm usually far behind on the non-malt liquor news. I'm surprised uh, nobody heard about this. Well, what was hilarious is Bum's telling me this as I'm looking through my my beer blogs, my RSS feeds, actually, you know, trying to get some beer news together, and he's like, "Oh, did you hear about who Embev bought?" And I'm like. No, and I'm still looking through my beard. You know what I'm saying, and <laughs> and it's nowhere in there. That's what yeah. that's what I'm blown away by too. So it's it wasn't in my latest beer news. Um, yeah. Well, I just looked up Budweiser overall on rate beer, and it still has a zero out of a hundred. So. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> okay, <You're> right. <laughs> See, that. nothing's going to change. Yeah, we have nothing to worry about. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> nothing to worry about. Nothing to see here. Yeah. Yeah, well, three for the style. The, the, <laughs> the problem is, we do know about it. We have a voice here on this show, yeah. and we will be putting that out there. Um, I, I will not forget that, you know. 
So the, yeah, rape beer has a horrible name now, man. And uh, 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 our friend Greg has already announced on his newest review that he's no longer going to give any ratings uh, for any beer he tries. He's no no longer going to oh. give any rape beer ratings. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, because he, right. he has beer. always done that. He has always yeah. done uh, beer out of the getting rape beer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he was yeah he definitely he liked great beer. Has he done Untapped? Oh yeah, he had he had it Untapped probably about a year ago. Okay, and he right. he said today yeah. that uh, rate beer is dead to him now. Now, okay. it, if you remember, now there when Untapped came out, there was at least one other beer app. It just didn't make it. it untapped uh, just took off. It, it, I, there might have even been two other apps that were like it, but uh, Untapped was the the big one. I mean, it just took off, you know, yeah. they, they had the better, the better interface. And if you ask me what really made untapped good was the fact that it wasn't only on your phone. You could always go on the website and log beers too. It, was, it wasn't just the app. And yeah. for a lot of us that were using beer advocate and rate beer, uh, that was huge because it needed to also be on the web. It didn't need to yeah. just be on the phone. It needed that. It needed both, and they recognized mm-hmm. that immediately. So the ones that only had the app failed. Mm-hmm. So it was it was the hand in hand, and, and if you, if you've noticed, you, you know every time they update the app, they've they've updated the web interface, and that's very important because um, mm-hmm. those I think it's two guys that started it untapped right out of yep. their garage yeah. or something, yeah. isn't they? Yeah, so. whoever whoever started Untapped, they were they really uh, were looking ahead when when they made it possible for you to have it on the computer and your cell phone. Yeah, so exactly. They, they were looking ahead right there. Yeah, you know, they were they were app they were app first, web page second. I mean that yeah. was they yeah. Were yeah. So in any case, we're out here, guys. Great show, great show. Sorry about we went long, but that was a, it was a good show jam packed full of information there um and yeah show show the show the Colt 45 there one more time i finished oh. this shit i finished <laughs> it yeah, there you go there you go <laughs> and and mark my word it's going to be another 11,237 days until i have another one. Oh my god was that <laughs> cool. that was well, enough wasn't it i'll only be like 84 when oh, you have oh. your next- by the way, bum bum, you you missed another port. Uh, an, uh, announce the big anniversary before we leave. Oh yeah, yeah. For uh, Ru- Ruben is hip to it because I know he watched it last year. We have some new guys here, and I'm not sure if Mark has ever uh, gotten caught up. A couple year, a couple days ago, uh, was the two year anniversary of the greatest episode of Share a Beer of all time. It's Share a Beer number three twenty three. Did you ever go back and watch it, Mark? That was the one you were absent for, where we had our special. Joe had his oh. special guest. Yeah, no. I talk about was this that, every year. Was that that crazy Ruben, redneck guy? Watch. Pardon me, Ruben. Crazy redneck guy. They kept swearing the whole time. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. I mentioned oh, that last year. Great. And you, that was great. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Gonna, I will. I mean, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Mark, that was your annual vacation show where you weren't there, and you have, Mark, you must watch it. It's, I watch it a couple <laughs> oh of times. Oh my goodness! A year. I'm gonna it, watch it. It starts. It starts slow. About the first seven minutes or so, Joe's there by himself eating, and nobody else is there. And uh, <laughs> I was watching live, you know, in the Q, Google Q and A at the time. Yeah. And yeah. I'm watching Joe eat his steak. Yeah, and this guy who I guess was just randomly looking through Google Hangouts just jumps in, and the rest is history. Yeah, I I've I've been slam and rum and cokes. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) he's slam and rum and cokes, and Dave. Dave, Dave jumps just in. does not know how to handle him. It is oh, so yeah. funny. He makes Dave takes a drag <laughs> on his cigarette, and at one at one point, this guy says something so ridiculous. Dave doesn't do a spit take; he does a smoke spit take. <laughs> <laughs> Spits yeah. out smoke. What episode is this again, Bum? Three twenty-three. Share yeah. a beer. Three twenty-three. All right. Oh, it's, it's on a the good big one. screen downstairs tonight. <laughs> right after this. 
It is. Yes, it, it is. is. That day lives in infamy. Classic. It does live in infamy. It does. That was. <laughs> that was. I. I. I worked my ass off that show, and at the, at the, at the, at the same time. I lost twenty pounds of ass on that show, man. Wow! And I was and working hard. Un- unfortunately, uh, in time, as things have changed and as you've moved to Google li- or uh, YouTube Live, the the uh, Go- uh, Google Plus Q and A comments that go with the show have since been gone. But one of my comments that was there up until uh, the changeover was, "This is the greatest episode of Share a Beer of all time," and I typed that live. <laughs> <laughs> you had to see the, as great as the show is to watch on a replay. You had to watch it live for the full effect because, as Joe was sweating hosting, I was sweating watching it. I was yeah. like, "What's this guy going to say or do next?" Yeah, <laughs> that, he was wild. Well, he was off the rails, huh? He was yeah. something else. But it's it's the the roughly two year anniversary of that show, yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, that was so that was to random acts of craziness. Of craziness, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that was definitely one for the books, man. That was uh, okay. That was that's definitely the uh, epitome of you know anybody can jump in the show pretty much you know. In the next couple mm-hmm. weeks after that, Joe, you only did specific invites. Uh, mm-hmm. you didn't yeah, invite everybody for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's you, you. You definitely have to find how to jump in the show now. Oh, hey, mom, how we doing? Hi. Hi, good to see you, mom. Hey. Hey. <laughs> that she really has hair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Very nice. Thank so, you. Uh, I hide it, but I'm doing the guinea pigs. We, we oh, got, okay. Mom's got guinea pigs in the other room. Oh, Ooh. okay. I'm, I'm in the kitchen right now making a, making a, like a pasta salad. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, he I did my turn when they were little, not kids. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's his turn, right? That's Tell right. Him. Yeah. That's hey, right. Man. That's right. <laughs> He's great, Joe, though. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Appreciate it for jumping in. Will you open my olives, please? Okay, guys. We're out of here, man. We've gone very, very long now. Um, but, uh, Actually, man, an hour hour and a half. We we haven't done a show that long in quite some time. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is more of a Mark show, yeah. But we had a ton of stuff to get in. We got most of it yep. in. We didn't get all of it in, but still. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace out, man. We're out of here, man. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Or on right. Friday's show. See you guys. Have a good week. Friday. Yep. Yeah. All right, man.